Hello dear students. Uh, in this video we will be deriving basically that the square of the, the time reversal operator uh, is equal to minus 1 for fermions. And, and once uh, we will prove this uh, that the square of the time reversal operator is equal to minus 1 then uh, in, in the next video, when I'll be discussing time reversal uh, in the domain of quantum mechanics, uh, I will directly be using this uh, 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 this this formalism that the square of the time reversal operator is equal to minus one. And uh, well, this is true for the systems. Uh, uh, which have half integer spins as I told you uh, the particles whose spins are half whom we also call as fermions and and we can we can prove this uh, uh, we can prove this uh, this expression that this can if uh, we have the time reversal uh, operator T uh, if we take its scare uh, it must be equal to minus one. This is the the target of this video to prove that the scale of the time reversal operator uh, is equal to minus one. And the key idea basically here is that the time reversal operator is it is anti-unitary and acts differently on systems with with half integers. Uh, like that of what we call them as fermions. Uh, compared to, uh, to the integer spins, uh, for integral spins, uh, uh, its value is equal to uh, plus one. Now, for the systems with half uh, integer, this uh, the square of this uh, time reversal operator is one, which means that applying time reversal twice does not return the system back to its original point. It does not. Uh, what it does, uh, it, it takes the system to some different state and and the, the state that differs by a phase equal to minus one. Uh, th this can be the right way uh, to translate down this square of the time reversal oper operator. Now uh, we would like to uh, we would like to prove that this uh, the scale of this time reversal operator for the systems uh, whose spins are half, uh, uh, we will uh, we'll go for uh, for proving this thing. Now, if I assume that we have spin half particles, spin half particles, whom we call as fermions, uh, and and to be precise, let me let it be an electron, and 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 the state of this. Uh, uh, this particle is described by two component spinors. Now, let me use uh, uh, the the symbol of this spinor as uh, uh, let's use use it as as chi, uh, as alpha and beta. So. The time reversal operator acts on the spinor. So I would like to uh, to act this time reversal operator on on this spinor. And what 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 we have to do in uh, mathematically for it, we have to take its complex conjugate uh, of the the spinor, and then we have to multiply it by the Pauli spin matrix, uh, probably sigma y to uh, uh, to flip the, the spin direction. So I would say that uh, uh, that for the spin half particle the time reversal uh, operator acts as. So I have to use this time reversal uh, operator which I am taking as T cap and this operator is acting on this spinor chi and when it acts on it what we obtain is I sigma y and the complex conjugate of this spinor, where this sigma y uh, is is the Pauli matrix and and how how much is this Pauli matrix? It is a matrix two by two zero zero minus i and i. 
Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is the the Pauli matrix uh, along y, and the the chi star that's over there. This is the complex conjugate uh, of the Sipinor chi. This means that that under time reversal, uh, the spin state is transformed. How is it transformed? It is transformed like, say, this is time reversal operator acting on alpha and beta, giving us i sigma y and alpha star beta star. Now, I can uh, I can explicitly. Uh, write this as this is i for sigma y I can use this uh, this matrix and what is that that is 0 minus i i and 0 times alpha star and beta star so this is time reversal operator acting on the spin r alpha and beta now what does it mean? Uh, this it means. Uh, uh, I mean, this shows basically that that T not only takes the complex conjugate of the spinor components, but also flips. It flips because if we multiply i, it, it's going to to translate sigma y uh, into another com component. So it's it's going to to flip. Uh, uh, the component to the other side. Now, uh, if we again apply the time uh, reversal op operator, now let's apply the time reversal uh, operator again. So applying T cap again. So what's T cap is, is the time reversal uh, uh, operator. So when we uh, apply the time reversal operator uh, again that means this this time reversal operator is acting on sipinors two times now starting by by the first one as as we did say t on chi it's going to give me i sigma y and chi star now next is that we have to apply this uh, 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 we have to apply this uh, this T cap again uh, to the transformed uh, state, which is I sigma y and chi star. Now, using the same rule for the time reversal, so so when we apply it again, what we will have we will have T cap whole square. Okay, then we will have our chi. So here I'll write T cap then I'll have I, sigma y, and chi star. That's it. Okay. So uh, what we are going to obtain from here, uh, so when we apply it again, I will again have I, sigma y. And I have the original I, sigma y. And then I'll have chi star of star. That should be the way. So... <coughs> So, so what what do we have here is we have uh, this this chi star is what it is the complex conjugate of chi, and if we take the complex conjugate of chi star, it will give me chi. So what I'll get here is iota times iota will give me uh, iota square, and sigma y sigma y is sigma y square, and we will have. Chi. So in the left hand side, I have T whole square chi. So we have the squared, we have the squared time reversal uh, operator. And when, when it acts on a spinor, what we obtain, iota square will give me 1. And what is sigma y square? Uh, we can check that sigma y square is. One. So what I'll obtain is I'll obtain T cap whole square chi is minus one and chi. And I can say this T cap square is minus one. 
this was the target and or or i think i think the right way uh, to 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 present this uh, 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 to present this situation is that for sigma square uh, will uh, will provide me the identity matrix okay so i have to have an identity matrix here and when you multiply the identity matrix with uh, with chi which is a spinor you will get minus chi and that will be more precise and then finally I have T cap whole square is equal to so here you must have chi when you replace the chi you have minus one so this was our target our target was to prove that the uh, the square of the time reversal operator is always equal to minus one for spin half particles and spin half particles are spinors spin half particles now if i have to uh, if i have to uh, go with, with with the physical interpretation of what i did actually uh, is that this the fact that this uh, the square of this time reversal operator is equal to minus one it has a very important physical implication what does that mean it means that if you apply this time reversal uh, operator twice on a spin half particle spin half state the state is not returned to its original uh, form but it acquires a phase factor uh, and that phase vector is equal to minus one and this is the key feature of Kramer's theorem, uh, which we have to prove later on, which states that the systems with half integer spin must have at least doubly degenerate levels when time reversal symmetry is present. So, so it will be a very strong tool to understand Kramer's theorem. And for fermions, the particles with half integer, uh, the time reversal symmetry leads to this degeneracy. So this is an indicator of degeneracy. Uh, degeneracy. Okay, and uh, uh, and that too because uh, the square of this time reversal operator is equal to minus one. And for bosons, uh, this uh, square of time uh, reversal uh, operator is simply equal to plus one and and we, we better understand that there is no such uh, degeneracy occurs when uh, when we deal with particles like bosons so what we have done here is basically uh, in this uh, in this lecture we have proven that the square of this uh, Time reversal operator is minus one for the systems uh, of for half spin systems. Understanding the action of the time reversal operator uh, on the spinors, and then what we did, applying t twice uh, to see that the spinor picks up the phase factor equal to minus one, and finally. Uh, concluding uh, that this property uh, is essential and it certainly underpins Kramer's theorem and leads to the degeneracy of, of energy levels for systems with, with half spin. So with this, I would like to say goodbye and uh, bye.